This video is not going to ask whether you should, it's going to ask whether you could. Today we're going to see if we can run a Godot project, which is a game engine, in Ruby on Rails, which is a full stack web dev framework. This is going to be an HTML5 built game, which uh, just means it runs in, in the browser, but it needs to be served from a server, which is going to be Rails. So I guess your workflow here is you want a website that also has a game on it. Maybe you're trying to make the next RuneScape. Uh, this is definitely an option. So to start with this, we're actually going to download Godot. So we're going to come to godotengine.org, go to the download button and just download the latest version. After you have it downloaded, you can then open up a downloads folder. If I come over here and I download it and I click on it, you'll get a folder like this, which you can then open Godot out of. You might get a warning if you try to run it just because it's a strange project. In here, I have two different uh, projects. I'm going to click new and I'm just going to call this web dev video and I'm just going to leave it in users Dean documents. Sure, why not? I'll call this Godot underscore video and then we'll just select this as the current folder. I'm going to copy this just so I can come back to this later and I'm actually going to switch over to the OpenGL ES 2.0 just because it says that it's better for web games. So I'm going to click create and then that'll open up a instance of Godot for me. Now that this is done I'm actually going to come over here and real quick before I do anything else I'm going to move into that directory just so I don't lose it because I'm probably going to forget where I put it. Now that that's done we'll go into I guess a 3D scene and and we'll just add in a cube or something. I don't know. We'll click on the little plus button, throw in a cube or a box. I don't know, whatever we have here. Uh, sure, let's let's throw in one of these. Seems good to me. And now let's come over and let's do a UI canvas. And in the canvas, we'll just do a, I guess, like a button. And for this button, we'll just uh, give it some text. So that we'll say this is like a test button. Or you can even say, click me. And then we can grab this. We'll throw it in the middle of the screen-ish. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not perfect. Why would we expect the button to be perfect? Now that we have this, we're going to want to create a script for it. So we'll click new script. We'll call this button.gd. Sounds good. That stands for GD script. So we'll click create. In our little script here, all we're going to do is we're going to say var counter equals zero. Let me actually zoom in a bit so you can actually read what I'm typing. And then we need to bind this to a function. So all we're going to do whenever we click a button is increment the uh, counter. So we can come back over to our scene. Somehow if we come over to the three 3D scene maybe, or I guess the 2D scene. In the 2D scene, we have the click me button. Let's come over to node on it. We'll actually click on the button. And then we'll say uh, on button up, we want to connect. So we'll click connect in the bottom right, and then we'll just connect it to this button, which will create a function for us. In here, all we want to do is say counter plus equals one. And then we'll do something like var num times equals time. We'll put a space in front of it. And then we'll just do if counter is greater than one, you'll notice this seems a lot like Python if you've never used Godot before. If it's greater than one, we just wanna put an S at the end of it because there's no pluralized method here. Of course there is in Rails, but this isn't happening in Rails quite yet. So now we can say self.text equals you clicked the game button space plus, and then we need to cast our counter to a string. So we'll say str counter plus num times, and then that gives us the rest of the function right there. So this will just, every time you click on it, it'll change the text to say how many times you've clicked on the button. So we can go ahead and save this. We'll save this scene as, I don't know, default scene. And now that we're done with that, we are actually good to test this. So we'll click play. We'll select the current scene as the play scene, and it should try to open this and run it. And now we have a button where if we click on it, it just says how many times we've clicked on it. Nothing special. That's not the point of the project, but what we can do now is we can come up to, I think it's project or maybe it's editor. It might be editor and go into manage export templates. And then you're going to want to download and install uh, from the best available mirror. And what this is going to do is it's going to try and download your build tools, I believe, uh, which will include your HTML5 build tools. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because I already have them. And then we can come up here to, I think it's maybe project export, and we want to click add, and we want to add HTML5 as our export, and we want to export this project. It's going to ask us for a file and a folder here. 
And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm just gonna call this build. And then in the build folder, we'll just click save. Okay, and now we, I believe have exported it. So let's go over to our folder here, which now has a build folder inside of it along with some other stuff. So if we try to run this HTML file right here, it should tell us that it failed to do something with the scene, failed to fetch, which just means that we're not running this in an HTML server, so it's not gonna be able to do anything. So at this point, we're actually done with the Godot portion of this strange tutorial, uh, and we can come over to the console here and create a new Rails project. So I'm just gonna type Rails new, I'll call it Godot underscore video, and then I'm actually going to CD into this. So I'll say and and CD into that just so it does it all at once. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to grab these files and we're going to put these files into the, uh, I think it's the public folder in Rails, which might not be the best practice. Uh, I, I don't really know if there is a best practice for what we're doing here, but we can go ahead and open this up in VS Code by typing code dot, which will open up our VS Code. I'll then drag this over and I'll bump up the font size a bit, maybe if it will allow me. We can then come into our console. We'll say Rails G controller pages home. We're just gonna create a home page here. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and run a Rails S. Now we'll come over to our config and our routes.rb. I'll hit control B to hide the side panel. I'm gonna change this git to a root and I'm gonna change this slash to a hash just because it sounds catchy. And that also sets the root of our application to be a home page. So if we now come over to localhost port 3000 by default, it takes us to a home page. And now we could do a route in here, but instead what I'm gonna do is just show you what the actual route is, and then you're free to do Rails magic for the rest of it. So what we need to do is come into our public folder and we're gonna grab these assets. So we're not gonna grab the build directory. We're actually just gonna be really sloppy here. We're just gonna grab all of these and we're gonna drop them into the public folder. You could of course add in your public folder and add it into your pipeline, I assume, and this would work just fine, but for here, uh, we're just doing it as as hacky as possible just to sort of show you how this works. So this right here is our Godot HTML file, which has just the basic styling and a bunch of other stuff. Nothing special there. But what we do have is this uh, this route right here that we can use, the web dev video.html. And if we come over here, we can now try to go to slash web dev video.html, and you'll see that we're actually running a game engine in our Rails project that is entirely from Godot. So if you want to create a link to this maybe in your Rails app, uh, we can try to do that real quick. Sure, why not? We'll go over to views, pages, home.html.erb, and we'll try to do a link to uh, I guess it's slash web dev video .html, uh, and we probably want to give this a name. So we'll just say play my cool game comma, and then the path that we want to link to, and then we'll come back to the homepage, I guess. And if we click on this, it takes us to the game. So we now have a way to play a game inside of a Rails app, which is something I never really thought I'd say, and yet here we are. So of course, because it's Godot, you can do more um, because it's an entire game engine similar to like Unreal. Uh, if Unreal would open, but I'm actually in the middle of deleting a whole bunch of assets right now for my voxel game. But it's very similar to that in the sense that there's a lot you can do. You can create 2D or 3D scenes. Uh, because this is a 2D scene that just has a button, you'd probably want to make this your main menu that then sends you to a 3D scene. And then in your 3D scene, you can do all sorts of other stuff. Uh, if you're interested, there are quite a few channels that cover Godot game development. I'll have a link to Fine Point CGI's channel in the video description where you can learn all sorts of basics with Godot and get up and running if you're looking to make a uh, Rails video game, I guess. But that's going to do it for me. Hopefully this is helpful uh, and I'll see you in the next video.